let's pretend you own your own ride sharing company or if you prefer you can just be the engineer in charge of logistics you have a large number of drivers scattered throughout the city and an even larger number of passengers looking for rides to specific points passengers can also share rides if the pickup and drop-off locations aren't too far out of the way and to make matters even more complicated the city's traffic conditions are continuously changing As the engineer, it's your job to write the algorithm which dispatches and routes all drivers in order to maximize both your company's revenue and passenger satisfaction. In other words, your job is to get the most passengers to their destination in the least amount of time with the least amount of cost. All right, engineer, what algorithm are you going to use? Well, if you're taking this course, chances are you're looking for answers. And I'm happy to report that reinforcement learning is the ideal framework for solving complex problems like ride sharing, dispatch, and routing. In a very simple environment with just a few passengers and no traffic considerations, we could use dynamic programming and brute force computing to get a perfect solution. But this quickly becomes very unworkable as the complexity of the system increases. But Q learning is a very good candidate for solving this problem while we learn through experience. Now I know many of you are itching to see a coding tutorial for a real world application like teaching robots to cook by video or building a champion StarCraft 2 bot and I promise we're definitely taking you in that direction. However, if you want any chance of understanding how the advanced algorithms work and being able to tailor them for specific problems, then you need a really solid understanding of the fundamentals. Everything stems from the basic Bellman equation. As researchers attempted to solve different real-world challenges with reinforcement learning, they ran into limitations of existing algorithms, so they started adding workarounds like adaptive learning rates. This course is a guided journey from the basic concepts to the cutting-edge algorithms which are solving complex real-world problems. But in order to move forward, you need a solid understanding of the basics. If you find yourself lost in this video, please go back through my previous videos and clear up anything you don't understand. So the good news is that this is not another grid world tutorial. The bad news is that we're still using a somewhat simple rideshare environment because it is vital that you fully get vanilla Q learning before we move on to deep Q learning and introduce the complexities of neural networks. So without further ado, Let's take a look at the challenge we're going to be solving. Welcome to OpenAI Gym Taxi Version 2. We're going to be dispatching a taxi to pick up a passenger who must be dropped off in the designated location as quickly as possible. Let's take a look at the taxi environment. We have a 5x5 five five grid. There are barriers in various places which must be driven around. There are four locations near the corners from which the pickup and drop off locations will be selected randomly. There are five possible states the passenger can be in at any given time, at any one of the four possible pickups or in the taxi. So we take 25 squares times four possible pickup locations times five passenger states, and that gives us 500 possible discrete states that our game could be in at any given time. Then we have six possible actions, north, south, east, west, pickup, and drop off. So the total size of our Q table is 500 times 6, which equals 3,000. The taxi and the passenger always start off in a random square. The taxi must pick up the passenger and drop off at the designated spot. A correct drop off gives 20 points, but every single move that it takes to get to that drop off costs 1 point. Plus, there is a penalty of minus 10 points for every illegal pickup and drop off action. Now, to quickly review, a reinforcement algorithm can either be on policy or off policy. In an on policy algorithm, values will only converge if we continue greedily taking the current best action according to our Q table. In other words, we must be playing the game live as we update our model. In an off policy algorithm, we can take any action whatsoever and even train on recorded data from a human or another algorithm playing the game and no matter what we do, the values will eventually converge. The technique we're learning in this tutorial is called Q-learning. And the primary advantage of Q-learning is that it is an off-policy method. 
It doesn't matter which policy we follow as long as we play the episodes. But if we were to take only random actions that would create much longer episodes and our values would take a lot longer to converge. So epsilon greedy is still the ideal way to play since it converges fastest. We have no more need to collect and store transitions for an entire episode. All we need to update the queue table using the queue learning algorithm is one transition, which includes the state, the action, the reward received, state prime, and action prime. All right, this is also called SARSA. In order to understand the queue learning algorithm, I'm going to do a brief review of temporal difference, which is the algorithm we use to update our queue table at each step. All right, so how can we calculate returns without storing an entire episode and iterating backwards as we did in Monte Carlo? Instead, we can calculate the average return for a state using a blending method. This is very similar to a moving average. It updates gradually. It relies on state action reward, state prime, action prime. Now, we don't have action prime, but we calculate it with the argmax of our Q table for state prime. Alpha is a hyperparameter which represents our learning rate or how large our queue table updates will be each step. Each step of the game we update our queue table in place by blending our actual returns with the previous value using a hyperparameter called alpha which represents the learning rate. Looking at this in terms of the original Bellman equation, it looks this way. And in terms of queue learning, it looks like this. The updated queue table for state and action is equal to the previous queue table plus alpha times the reward plus gamma times the argmax of Q for state prime minus the original Q value that we're updating. Gradually, the values will converge and updates will get smaller and smaller. Policy in any given state is simply the action with the maximum Q, the same thing we were doing before. Now that we know the basic algorithm for Q learning, which does solve this task, let's look at a couple additional tricks to enhance the performance of our algorithm. The first one is called adaptive epsilon. Now remember, epsilon is a probability of taking a random action in any given step. Our values can converge faster if we taper or lower epsilon over time. We start out with an almost completely random policy. We taper epsilon over time using the formula, the new epsilon equals the starting epsilon divided by one plus epsilon taper times the step number we're in. This way it will approach zero but never reach zero. Epsilon taper is a hyperparameter to tune. Around 0.01 .01 seems to work very good for this task. The next tweak we're going to look at is called the adaptive learning rate. The learning rate expressed as alpha is the blending factor we use to update our Q table with each new unit of experience. If alpha is too high, we may miss the sweet spot of ideal policy, and if it's too low, training will take forever. A great way to get both speed and accuracy is an adaptive learning rate. One way is to start high and taper it down at each step. But some states are visited more often than others, so a more intelligent way to do this is to count how many times we've experienced each state action pair and taper based on that experience count. The alpha for the given state in action is equal to the starting alpha divided by 1 plus the number of times we've experienced a state in action times the alpha taper parameter. Alpha taper is another hyperparameter which we can tune. For this task, 0.01 .01 also seems to work great. Alright, enough theory. Let's jump into the code and see how this works. First, let's examine how to create an open AI gym environment and play a random episode. This is taxirandom.py. First, we make an instance of the environment. Max steps is the maximum number of steps the environment will permit until it force quits. We're going to track our total reward. First thing we do is reset our environment, which returns the initial state. env.render draws the environment on the screen in its current state. Now we'll loop until the game is done. env.actionspace.sample returns a random action. 
env.step takes the action we've chosen and returns four values. The new state, the reward received, whether the game is done, and some info specific to each environment. We update our total reward and render the new game state on the screen. If the episode is done, we break. At the bottom, we print the total reward. Now, Let's take a look at how to implement the Q learning algorithm together with adaptive epsilon and adaptive learning rate. At the top, we've got several hyperparameters that you can tweak. The total number of episodes to play and train on. The discount factor gamma. The starting value for alpha, the learning rate. The amount we taper alpha for each update. The starting value for epsilon and the amount we taper epsilon each episode. Next, we extract the size of the observation space, 500, and the number of actions, 6, from our environment. We initialize our Q table with all zeros for each possible state and action pair. We create an empty table to track how many times we visit each state. This is purely for tracking statistics. And initialize a table of integers to track how many times each state action pair is updated so we can taper the learning rate. The update Q function is the heart of our algorithm. First, we taper the alpha based on how many times we've previously visited the given state action pair. Then we add a visit to our update counts table for the previous state and action. Finally, we apply the temporal difference equation to update our Q table for the previous state and action. Note we multiply gamma by the argmax to find the highest Q value among all actions for the state prime. We subtract the Q value of our previous state in action. Everything is multiplied by alpha before it's added to the existing Q of S and A. Now, onto the main loop. As before, we're going to track the biggest Q value change from each episode in order to visualize how our algorithm is converging. Each episode. We taper epsilon using the algorithm discussed to reduce the probability of our agent taking random actions. Every 1,000 episodes, we print the average reward and current epsilon. Every 10,000 episodes, we save a checkpoint into the checkpoints folder. All right, now for each step of each game. First, we store the previous state. We add a visit to our state visit counts. We pick an action using the same epsilon greedy algorithm from Monte Carlo. Then we feed the chosen action to the environment and get back state prime, the reward, and whether the game is over. We update the total reward calculation. Next, we update our Q table using the function we previously went over. We track the biggest change and store it in the deltas once per episode. Then, after the chosen number of episodes are complete, we print the average time each state has been visited purely for statistical purposes. Finally, we plot the deltas to visualize how our algorithm has converged over time. I've taken a moving average in order to smooth things out since the data is very noisy. We've saved several checkpoints, so now we can take a look at what the gameplay actually looks like. Each game starts with random positions so each play will be slightly different. You should have a policy which can play optimally no matter what starting state you end up in. You can see the list of checkpoint files saved in the checkpoints folder. Just run taxi random.py with the path to one of the files and you can see one complete episode played. A yellow taxi has no passenger. A green taxi has a passenger inside. You can see that by 50,000 training episodes, our taxi is taking very optimal paths. Now, if you want the fullest understanding possible of how this works, I recommend you code it yourself based on the algorithms we went over earlier in the video. I'll be completely honest. I didn't fully understand it until I started creating this tutorial. Coding it yourself will put you well on the way to engineering dispatch algorithms for the next Lyft or Uber. All right, this is Colin Scow, and I'll see you again in the next unit. Until then, happy coding.